Hello, my name is Jo Tuffle and I'm the expert tutor for financial management for the ACCA. This topic explainer video is all about foreign currency risk. Now this topic is tested in syllabus area G and it's the final one of the seven syllabus area topics. Now it's only tested in the MCQ areas. Now as it's only tested in the MCQ areas, you will be likely to get a question in section B on risk management. Now it could be a mix of foreign exchange management or interest rate management, but you will get one. In this topic explainer video on foreign currency risk, we're going to be looking at transaction risk and how we hedge against it. There are a variety of techniques. I'm going to be focusing on giving you examples of how to do questions on the forward market and the money market hedging. Now, transaction risk management is not concerned with maximising income or minimising expenditure, but rather having certainty over receipts and payments, and it can be managed in a variety of ways. So there are several external hedging techniques you need to know about forward exchange contracts, money market hedges, and derivatives, which are currency futures, options, and swaps. Calculations will only be required on forwards and money market hedges. The more complex derivatives, options, futures, and swaps can only be examined by discussion. Before we start looking at worked examples of the different hedging techniques, you need to understand which exchange rate to use, and I have a foolproof way of doing this. The exchange rate is quoted as the term to the base, or the foreign currency to the domestic. So for example, four dinars to the dollar. The dinars would be the term or the forex currency, and the dollar would be the base, because it's denominated as one dollar, one unit. You always divide to convert to the base or the domestic currency. So here, dinars 1,200 is divided by that exchange rate of 4 to the dollar to give us $300. You always divide. There are often two rates given in the question, a low or a high rate. If you're making a payment in foreign currency or the term currency, then you're feeling quite low. Therefore, you pick the low rate. If you're going to get a receipt in foreign currency, then you're feeling very happy. You're feeling high, so you're going to get the high rate. Remember, the company always loses. The bank always wins. So a payment in Forex using the low rate would make a higher payment than if you were using the higher rate. And the opposite would be true with the receipt the high rate would give you a lower receipt from the bank than if you used the lower rate. Hopefully that step process you can learn and therefore you will be successful every time you convert in the ACCA financial management exam. Let's now look at forward exchange contracts. This is in chapter 17, section 3.2 of the study hub. A forward contract is a legally binding agreement to buy or sell a specified quantity of a specified currency on agreed future date at an exchange rate fixed today. Now forward contracts aren't traded but are agreed between a company and a counterparty, for example a bank. So they are over the counter, they are not traded. Now this means they are customised agreements which can be matched exactly with the requirements of the company regarding quantity and delivery date. Please remember, they are binding. You have to go through with them. It's an obligation. Now we come on to activity three, which is in the study hub. Today is the 1st of January, 2021, and a UK based company, so that means it's the domestic currency, the base currency is the pound, is expecting dividend income of $200,000 and that's to be received from its US subsidiary on the 31st of March 2020. So that is in three months time. We've got two sets of rates here, a spot rate now and a three month forward 
and we have a low rate and a high rate for each. The requirement says calculate how much sterling will be received if forward cover is taken out. So therefore we ignore that spot rate because we're going to be using the forward rate. We now need to decide whether we're using the low rate or the high rate. Now we're receiving money, we're receiving dividend income. So we're happy, we're high. So therefore we're going to be getting the high rate. So the forward rate for changing dollars into pounds is 1.5459. It must be the rate which gives the lower receipt to the company. Therefore the receipt is $200,000 and we always divide between the forex and the base and we get 129374. We now come on to the money market hedge. Again, this is chapter 17, section 3.2. Now a money market hedge is a technique to lock in the value of a foreign currency transaction in terms of the organization's domestic currency using a combination of investing, borrowing, and a spot currency exchange. We're using the money markets. There's a money market in each country and so we'll be using the money market in the forex currency and the money market in the base currency. And what we do is we effectively produce a homemade forward exchange rate. And the resulting exchange rate depends on the interest rate differentials between the two currencies. I'm now going to show you a worked example of how to do a money market hedge using an activity from the study hub. Here we have a worked example of money market hedging. Let's say a UK based company expects to receive $300,000 in six months time. The spot rate in dollars per pound is 1.7818 or 1.7822 to the pound. We've been given some annual sterling interest rates. Note they are annual. 5% borrowing and 4% depositing, and then also the equivalent annual dollar interest rates. Now the process we need to follow for money market hedging, because we're receiving money in dollars, foreign currency, to the UK based company, then we need to set up borrowing in the US, the foreign market, because what will happen is we'll basically pay off that loan with the receipt in dollars that we're receiving in six months time. So the process is, as we set up the borrowing in the US money market today at the present value of the 300,000 discounted at the US borrow rate. Now, because it's six months and not annual, then we'll need the six month rate. And so the borrowing rate in the US is 6%. So we'll need to use 6% times by 6 over 12, 3%. We then convert the loan value at the high spot rate, because that's the rate we'll get from the bank, to find the value to deposit in the UK money market today. So remember, you do the opposite in the UK market, the base market, that you're doing in the foreign market. And because we're borrowing in the foreign market, we need to deposit in the UK market. And the deposit rate in the UK market is 4%. So therefore we would be getting at a six monthly rate, 2%. And then the outcome of the hedge in six months time will be the UK deposit will have compounded up at the UK deposit rate. And we'll take that off deposit and that will be our receipt. We will then receive the money from the US customer and we'll use that receipt to pay off the loan in the US money market. We're now ready to show you the actual workings. I've set up the hedge in this box and we have the now and the six months. And then we have the two different markets with the spot rate in between the two. Now the calculations work in this order. 
We go round in an anti-clockwise way. Now remember the foreign market is where we borrow because we're getting a receipt and therefore we do the opposite in the domestic market is where we deposit. So we're going to receive $300,000. We need to find the present value of that. So therefore we divide by the borrow rate. And remember it was the six monthly borrow rate and that was 3%. So we're going to divide by 1.03. So 300,000 divided by 1.03 gives you in dollars to borrow 291262. We convert that at the high rate of 17822. And remember you divide to convert and therefore that results in 163428. We're going to be depositing at the six monthly rate of 2%. So therefore we multiply by 1.02 to compound up. And now the outcome of the hedge is 166,697. So here we've effectively manufactured a forward rate. You simply take the 300,000 and divide it by the outcome of the hedge. And it comes out with 1.7889. The dollars have become more to the pound and that's because interest rates are higher in the US. Here is my step process on how to set up a money market hedge. You see it differs on whether you're receiving or paying in that foreign currency. So you need to start always with the foreign market, the Forex money market. If you're having a receipt in Forex, then you're going to borrow in that Forex market. But if you're paying, then you're going to deposit in the foreign market. You then discount hedging amount by the appropriate rate and divide. So in the Forex, you'll pick the borrow or the deposit rate, depending on whether you're receiving or paying. And you must remember to pro rata that annual rate to be three months or six months, depending on how long you want the hedge. You convert the spot again by dividing. So remember, if you're paying in Forex, it's still the low rate. And if you're receiving in Forex, it's still the high rate. And then you finally compound up by doing the opposite to the Forex market in the domestic market. So if you were borrowing in the forex market, you would now be depositing in the base market. So my steps to success are start with the forex market, then divide, divide and multiply. Then you will get the outcome of that money market hedge. Now it's your turn. This isn't exactly the same as the last question. This is because now we're making a payment in six months of 300,000. So we're going to have to use the spot rate, which is the low rate, because that's pay low. Use the same theory as I use for the forward rate. And we're going to be doing the opposite of what we were doing before. So we're going to invest in the US market and borrow in the UK market. And that's because we're paying and so we want a deposit in the US market to be able to pay the US supplier. So if we're investing in the US market we must be using the deposit rate and if we're borrowing in the UK market then we must be using the borrowing rate. But remember they've got to be six month rates. You still calculate the hedge in the same direction. So you can follow those steps and have a go. Remembering we're paying 300,000 and we're calculating in the same direction as we did before. You're discounting back 
exchanging at the spot rate by dividing and then multiplying. So divide, divide, times. Have a go. Pause the video and then you can look at the answer and see if it's correct against mine. So here's the outcome. As both the rates we were using were 5%, we're going to divide by 1.025 because that's a six monthly rate. Divide by the spot rate, which is the low rate, because we're paying. And then multiply up by the 1.025 again. And the outcome of the hedge is 168369. Now you'd be surprised to know, or not surprised to know, that the effective forward rate is now the same as the spot rate. And that's because there was no interest rate differential. Both were at 5% over the six months. I hope you found this Topic Explainer video on foreign currency risk helpful. We looked at the calculations for doing a forward exchange contract and a money market hedge. There's a step process for each and hopefully you can now learn those and we will be successful in the exam. Good luck.